I remember the moment I first realized I'd been living my whole life in black and white. It was like discovering a color I never knew existed before. A whole new crayon box full of colors. That was it for me. From then on, there was no putting the pieces back together, no going home. Things were different now. Asia had ruined me for my old life. I took a walk through this beautiful world. Felt the cool rain on my shoulder. It's good. This guy's trying to kill us. They make more than 100 bottles a day, so 30,000 bottles. See, that's a lot of. That's a lot of. Uh, did I did I do that right? Yeah. Or have I had too many whiskeys? Whiskeys. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> How did I get here? <laughs> Coming into focus, the man across the table. He looks familiar. Maybe, if I can remember who he is, it'll be a clue as to where I am. Okay. Right, Andy. Andy Ricker. The white guy who cooks awesome Thai food. Is it pretty spicy? Put that in there. The Pock Pock in Portland. Restaurants in New York. Andy's made a name for himself faithfully reproducing the cuisine of northern Thailand. Mm. The good stuff that comes from places Suyot. like here. Rice country. Chiang Mai province. In this part of the world, you live and die by the harvest. Thai food is intensely regional, and northern Thailand in particular Whee! has many distinctive features. This is a world of fresh, delicious, spicy, meaty, salty, sour, sweet, bitter. Often with a just-picked herby dimension. And always, the most vital thing, giver of life, sticky rice. Andy here is constantly back and forth from America to Thailand for nearly 25 years now, looking for recipes, techniques, digging deeper and deeper into an amazingly complex and widely misunderstood cuisine. Okay. So? And getting his ass chastised by a few aunties as he goes. Okay. On this trip, Andy's working on a new cookbook, investigating the eating and drinking culture of the region. Which might be why he thought of me, and why we're drinking shine for breakfast. Where there's food, there's also gonna be booze. Oh, And likely, a lot of it. Oh, that's good. This is Nempik Ong. You make a chili paste with chilies, garlic, shallot, shrimp paste and tomatoes. And then you mix it with pork. That's for you. OK. Oh, yeah. Ah. And the rampreek is awesome. Isn't it delicious? This rice is grown here in the village. You just kind of make a little spoon-shaped ball with it. Now, what's the famous greeting? Is it, have you eaten yet, or is, have you had rice? It's both. Literally, it means, have you eaten rice yet? But what it really means is, how's it going? 
it is assumed right. that if you haven't eaten yet, things are not going well. If you've eaten, rice is such a fundamental component. Eating is synonymous with eating rice. To eat a meal without rice would be unthinkable. What makes their whiskey special? How much that cow? Because of the flavoring that they add to it. Conveniently, our hosts, in addition to having provided us with a fine meal, just so happened to run a distillery out back. They use the spice mixture they add to the yeast balls, let it ferment for five days, right. and then she smashes it with a wood mallet. Thai rice whiskey, lao kao, bucket of hooch, whatever you want to call it, this stuff is a delightful beverage that tastes better and smoother, apparently, the more you drink. Oh, oh, oh here we go. Skating. Sneaky, sneaky. Well, and then uh, fried fish. I believe it's called Nile tilapia or Nile carp. They just salt the hell out of it and then deep fry it. Good stuff. Mmm. Mm. First one. Same, same, gasoline. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys trying to kill us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Cup kun ma kap ma. For my answer. Yes, for your uncle, yes. 69 years old. Looking good, good. He drinks half a bottle every day. So it's pretty much the Keith Richards uh, health and preservation plan. All right. I'm going to get healthy, too. <laughs> the whiskey, I have to say, is taking hold <laughs> in some clinically fascinating ways. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> lost my, I lost the plot. Oh, uh, that's okay. <laughs> it all comes back to me as the world shifts, <laughs> untilts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and though I've been looking out a whole lot of hotel windows these days, struggling to figure out where I am. <laughs> Okay. Being here, throwing back shots of rice whiskey with these guys, I know I'm back in Thailand. <laughs> Not just Thailand, but northern Thailand. Once known as Kingdom of a Million Rice Fields, it's a fertile, green, and gorgeous area, home of the ancient Lana people. Welcome to Chiang Mai Province. Tucked up near the borders of Burma, China, Laos, India, not too far away. All of them have left their mark on the food. Here's the local hooch, Lao Kao. And if you're eating here, chances are you're also drinking. Ugh. Compared to the, uh, the stuff we had this morning, uh, this is uh, substantially more uh, harsh, I would say, and less fragrant. The village of Mayon. And this place is called Him Tang. How did you find this place, Ben? We're in the middle of nowhere. It's a very popular place. A restaurant showcasing one of the distinguishing elements of northern Thai cuisine, the heavy use of animal protein. You see the local people, they're lining up. Here in northern Thailand, pig reigns supreme. So most of the stuff we're eating here is made out of pig. Okay, so what did you order? Grilled pigtail. That sounds superb. Yeah. Yep. And then he ordered some Saiwa, northern Thai herbal pork sausage. Oh, yeah, I'm on that. Brain, some pig's brain. Yeah, I'm not a big brain fan. I just, a custardy sort of texture coupled with a sort of nutty taste. Frankly, I'd sooner grab a big handful of nut sack, so to speak. <laughs> It's mixed with a curry paste and some herbs and stuff, mm -hmm. thrown into a, a banana leaf and then grilled. It's like eating scrambled eggs. You'll yeah. love it. Then we ordered lu, raw blood soup. Raw. What do you mean? If they don't cook it in the... They do not cook the blood. They, well, they put it into a hot soup. No. This is raw blood. Really? There's two kinds that you can get here. One is the addition of ki on, which means young shit. So it's basically the partially digested juice that's made from when a cow eats grass. 
shit juice is oh, not. Oh, jeez. Exactly, oh, yeah. No. I did not order that. We're not having that. Oh, okay, but we're not having that. We're not having that. Okay. I'm thinking we'll stick to the plain blood soup. Thank you very much. And the way that they make it is they take the, the raw blood and they scrunch it with lemongrass mm -hmm. for a long time. Worth. Because that uh, kind of kills the gamey flavor of the blood, uh -huh. helps with the coagulation, and adds flavor. And right. then they actually make a chopped lab, the, the minced meat salad that's yeah. raw. That goes in with a whole bunch of deep fried krung nai or innards. <laughs> Here it is. Ooh. You're, you're not kidding. That, that really, that's like a horror movie. It's like CSI soup. I'm eating out of an open wound. <clears throat> Actually, that's completely delicious. It's utterly delicious. And <laughs> that makes you look like a vampire. <laughs> it's quite spicy. You can taste the chilies. It doesn't really taste like blood. It just kind of tastes sweet and rich. Let's see if we can change your mind about brains. Delicious. I'm not lying. This is delicious. Anyone would just completely love this. If you eat too much of this, you'll go blind. That's what they think. Yeah, yeah. they said that about off, and I'm still here. <laughs> and it has to do with parasites and, and all kinds what, of shit. Huh? Oh, can I tell you some stories about Whoa, whoa, whoa. This? Back up there, Buckaroo. Yeah, yeah, we, we got Parasites. about two or three years ago, and uh -huh. a whole family in uh, Nan province, all seven of them died. Oh, that, that's really, you know, you probably should have told me that <laughs> you were the appetizer course, OK? <laughs> Honestly, it's the best meal I've ever had in Thailand. Ever. I'm super happy to hear that. I'd eat it out of Chris Christie's jockstrap on a hot summer day. <laughs> <laughs> this is CNN. Oh, God. In Chiang Mai, you can move in and out. From the quiet green of the countryside to just a few miles away, the madness and chaos of Chiang Mai City, second largest in Thailand. Spirituality, reflection, the serene beauty of the rice paddy, village life, maybe next episode, Farang. This time, it's all about consuming medically inadvisable amounts of food, and drink. If Thailand is one of the best countries to eat in, cheers. Then Chiang Mai is a particularly good city to find yourself hungry. Oh, oh that's your frog. That's the frog. It's basically taking that frog, grill him first, <laughs> hack it up, fry the living bollocks out of it with garlic. Mm. You know, there's almost an inverse relationship. Like, the more hideous looking the dish, the more delicious it is. As you probably noticed by now, the food here is not pad thai or green curry chicken. There are complex layers of flavor, sophisticated balances, spicy, sour, a little bitter, salty, herby. Color and texture are important. Crispy, soft, cold, hot. It's exactly this interplay between elements that makes Northern Thai food so thrilling and so addictive. This place is called Lab Gao Cham Cha. Lab is the dish that they're known for, which is the mincemeat salad. Now, what's that furry material? Everybody? That's one of the many stomachs of the cow. It might be the third stomach. Mmm. It's bitter. It means it has just a little bit of the bile. The gentleman over there, Uncle, he's the lob master. They win lob competitions. Oh, yeah? They're killing it. They're supporting the whole Danny family. The woman who just took her order, right. her family, and her husband, who's the guy who's the cashier, the uncles, the aunties. When it gets really busy, the rest of the family comes and helps. Come <laughs> on.
You famously said that you hate the word authentic. What does that word mean? Depends on the context. If you're in the United States and you say a traditional authentic Thai restaurant, to me that has come to mean a standard Thai restaurant in America, that menu. When you come here, authentic is if you're the daughter of the woman who made this, then to you this is the most authentic version of that dish. If you're from Nan province, you still make la, but it doesn't taste like this. It's a little bit different. The slop's amazing. Friday night and Chiang Mai comes alive. Thailand, we will come. We love you. Andy has promised a compressed eating and drinking grand tour of the city. A bounce by Tuk Tuk from one place to the other until we simply can't take it no more. Next stop, it ain't Flavor Town. It's someplace beyond that man, way beyond. Welcome to Thailand and happy stay here in Chiang Mai. On your mark, get set, go. Pick up. Cheers. This may surprise you, but I am not an alcoholic. I don't drink at home, ever. There's no beer in my fridge. If I'm not working, I'm not hanging out in bars. But if I was an alcoholic and I did hang in bars, I'd hang here. Some karaoke, maybe? <laughs> Even though the very mention of karaoke makes my blood run cold with fear. <laughs> You ordered french fries? Yes, I did. Apparently, it's a indigenous specialty. In Thailand, fen phai is probably one of the most popular menu items. They always have food to eat when you drink. What is this whiskey we're drinking, by the way? I haven't really paid attention. The whiskey we're drinking here is actually rum. This guy's good. It's one of the, the great things about a place like this. You'll never have to fill your own glass. That could be me someday, I'm thinking. Things go just a little wrong, I go off the rails. This would be all too attractive. I could well see myself singing happy birthday in German to tourists in a hotel bar in Jakarta or Bangkok. Enjoy my fen fly. This is a fantastic discovery. This is going to stick in my head now. Chiang Mai at night, and we are well on our way. To where, to what, I don't know, I don't much care. But I do know it's time to eat. In Thailand, it's almost always a time to eat. Oh yes, and drink, we shall be doing that too. The inevitable ice and beer. Way to drink beer in Southeast Asia. Beer, you say? Oh, all right, in the interest of research, of course. You got beer, you got booze, you got ice, you got some grilled meat. Snackage? Yes, I would like snacks. They've got pork chin and intestines. You got 
got a spicy dipping sauce. Ah, this is a Chinese liquor. All right. Oh. Tastes like boner medicine. Yes. It also tastes like uh, a dirty sack. When did you come to Thailand first? I believe it was 1987, and I came as a backpacker. It was right. all about you know, smoking dope on the beach, right. eating mushrooms, chasing girls, and drinking beer. I had a three-month ticket, and uh, I ended up staying away for four years. Here we go. Oh, so what was the dish? There's a dish in every traveler's life where they just said, OK, you know, my previous life is not going to be enough for me anymore, you know? There's a particular mushroom. They make soup out of it. It was unlike anything I'd ever had in my life. When I first came out to this part of the world, those noodles, I mean, I knew right then. I mean, I'm not joking. It wasn't the girls. It wasn't the beaches. The noodles, the greasy bottle of fish sauce, yeah. and the smell. It's this terrible moment where you realize uh, I can't share this. That's it. About five seconds, we're going to go past a woman who has a cowboy hat on. The lady with the hat stands out among the dozens of street vendors across from the old city's north gate. The best cow kamu, or stewed pork leg, in the city. Potentially wow. none finer in Thailand. Yeah, are we going? Are we doing that? Show? Well, for years she's been serving this, kao ka mu, slowly stewed pork. She cooks it in a master sauce, uh -huh. you know the Chinese master sauce, where right. you cook it in the same thing. It probably goes back at least a generation. It's like sherry. There's a little bit of the original batch still in there. Exactly. She's hacking wet meat all day, and there's like not a drop on the uh, on the, the frilly. This is a sauce that goes with it. It's kind of like a sour chili sauce. Uh -huh. And then you, you got to have some of these pickled mustard greens, too, pak dong. That's really tasty. This place is, is famous as hell. Like, half the people here are tourists, probably Chinese tourists. Let's do it. You want to stick your feet in some fish water? Uh, no. No. All right, let's go, guys. Uh, I need to stop at a sports bar. I need to have some chicken wings. I need to have some, like, uh, fried mozzarella sticks. I need to go to a gun range. More beer, more food. If you go on the sidewalk, it'll take us, like, 10 right. minutes to get 50 okay. feet. Kind of stay to your right and don't get killed. What was I saying? Oh, yes. Beer loves crispy. Beer loves salty. Beer loves fatty. Spicy, salty, fried, together. Happiness. Oh, OK. No beer. Uh, OK, what are they drinking? Uh, they're drinking water. Clear kidney cleaning water. Exactly. So good. It's so important to a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> I'd imagine. Midnight Nam Prik Noom. That's what you do after you've had a few drinks, maybe a lot of drinks, because what you need, maybe you didn't know you needed it, but you do, is Nam Prik. Thai chili dip. Yeah, Nam Prik is what the vast majority of Thai people who live in America, who come to Thailand to visit, who go back, end up getting busted at the airport for trying to bring in. We get two kinds, Nam Prik Thai Deng. It's a combination of chilies, garlic, shrimp paste, dried fish. And this. Colloquially known as Midnight Nam Prik Noom. Made from roasted green chilies. Accompanied by God's preferred delivery systems for beer-friendly goodness. Ooh. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm on that. A whole bunch of deep-fried little salty, meaty, delicious things. Yes, please. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. And kai tom. Mm. 
Yes. And oh yes, something I've loved from the first mouthful I ever had, right here in Chiang Mai all those years ago. <laughs> Thai pork sausage. Mmm. Crispy, meaty, salty. I love it. I want to rub it all over my body. And this sausage is so amazing. It's somehow the thing you need right now. And this is totally the thing I, re I need right now. Oh, it's so good. Okay, come to me, my love, right now. You big, nasty, unfamiliar, semi-cooked egg. Oh, it's so good. I once wrote, your body isn't a temple, it's an amusement park. Enjoy the ride. Please. But that was before I had a daughter and a respectable job at CNN. So when that little voice in my head said, call it a night, quit while you're ahead, I probably should have listened. Wait, where did we leave off? Ah, oh, yes, now I remember. Bouncing to one bar after another. We're going that way. Which way? That way. OK, good. Andy and I have clearly tuck-tucked our way well beyond the threshold of acceptable conduct. The music. The dance. But do we call it a night? Quit while we're ahead? No. We're going to head over to see a time-honored tradition. Ladies and gentlemen. The ladyboy cabaret. Yeah, let's do that. All right, here it is. Lady boys, as they are known in Thailand, have led to many an embarrassing moment for the amorous cowboy too buzzed to notice or care much about the details. My first experience with this kind of an atmosphere in Thailand happened in Koh Phangan in 1987. I met this girl and I was like stoked because it was like, oh, she's into me. And like, at some point she sat on my lap and she's like, oh, well, I have to go now. I have to go do something. And she gave me a kiss and I was like, I'm in. Right. And the show started. frankly, are pretty spectacular looking, especially the ones who have breasts. You know, the women are harsh in the buzz. This should be a guy thing. Absolutely. They should have a sports bar. Actually, that's a brilliant idea. You should bring that to New York. OK, if we had a lady boy show in a sports bar, you could watch football, drink a lot of beer, and around beer number eight, bring out the lady boys. Just my luck. At a show like this, what happens? Like she says. I end up kissing the one lady boy in Thailand who looks like Ernest Borgnine, straight on the lips. Of course, I am completely oblivious to the day glow white lipstick all over my face. Out of context, photos of me here tonight end up on the internet. This could look bad. Awesome show.
actually going home alone, by the way. I just want to make sure that's established in the continuity. In spite of all evidence to the contrary. <laughs> yeah. Snacks? Snacks. Let's go eat. This train has long ago come off the rails. One bar after another. It's time Andy and I head to an appropriate follow-up to a night like we've had. More food. Quickly. This has become an emergency situation. There it is. Drunken noodles, dude. Had Kimau is actually not a noodle dish. It's something served with rice. How can you have drunken noodles with no noodles? This is what we need. Whatever it is. It's something devised for drunken people to eat. Oh, that's us. Something to sop up the roiling tide of Lao Kao sloshing around in my stomach. And I need to sober up in case Ernest Borgnine calls. She said she'd call. I feel so used. I'm here right now. Wow. Top, cup and top. In the north, they love to eat pork here. Look at all the damn chilies. There's a lot of chilies here. We got these fresh red ones. We've got these green ones that were sliced and stir fried in there. And we've got small green peppers. Oh, whoa. That's hot. Whew. I breathed in, I got hit with the chili yeah. down the sides of the throat. Yeah, you know when you really hit like super hot, like when you feel like you're having a brain hemorrhage? It's like an ice cream headache, but it's like a pepper headache. Yeah, and, and your vision starts to tunnel out. You're halfway through, and you're, you're aware that your hair is just burst into flames. That perfect balance of pain and pleasure and more pain. Brain flooding with endorphins, and all is well with the world. Until tomorrow morning. Woo. So, dude, I've had a couple of cocktails. Cocktails. I think we should like totally get like tattooed tomorrow, man. Magic tattoos. <laughs> Time for bed. So I woke up in a state of confusion and deep concern after inadvertently making out with Ernest Borgnine last night. I spiraled into some identity crisis. Inadvertently making out with Ernest Borgnine, I'd like to say. Um, yeah, it was very dramatic. I, I need to go to a strip club and watch a football game, mow the lawn and barbecue all at the same time. I'll mow somebody else's lawn. And I don't mean that in a figurative way. Can't talk, it hurts to talk. Oh. You know, every region has sort of an iconic dish. You're talking northern Thailand, Chiang Mai. This is it. Hearty broth of curry, coconut, noodles, and spices. I am all over that. Oh, yeah. Mm. They eat some more onions. The boys at the bar tonight are going to be in for a surprise if they move in for a smooch. God damn, that's good.
I'm a big believer in a healthy, nutritious breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. My doctor said that. Of course, he also said that just about everything I love and hold dear is killing me, so what does he know? Attention, hippies. This is a salad. Green papaya salad, that's not really a local thing. That's a piece of sound thing, but I couldn't resist. Mm. Spicy papaya salad, some cow soy, and I gotta find a Catholic church. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I have kissed a man on the mouth. Oh, it burns like the fires of hell. Burn away, sin. Burn away. Okay, last meal time, last lap. Stagger across the finish line. Meow. Andy's favorite spot in Chiang Mai, a family-run restaurant named Auntie Deng's Hammered Meat. And the jokes pretty much write themselves, folks. <laughs> no, every year, every year. <laughs> Andy's been coming here forever, since it was only Auntie Deng's lightly slapped me. He's practically family. Mm. <laughs> 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 Hammered meat, here anyway, is beef or pork that's been charcoal grilled, then pulverized in a ropey threads to give it a distinctive texture, then served with spicy chili and galangal dip. Mm. <laughs> Oh, so I, I guess um, I've been accepted by the family, and I'll be living in the house here next door. And uh, my job is going to be to smash beef with a hammer every night, probably for the rest of my life. Cop. Uh, cop. <laughs> this woman has expectations, dude. I'm, I'm in deep, deep trouble. It's pretty obvious. What do they pound it before they cook it? It wouldn't look like that if they pounded it before they cooked it. Right. Right. Well, the whole idea is a classic. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good. Mm. Chewy. Mmm. Chewy. Still chewy. Still chewing. That's delicious. Good. Mm. And because Andy is a VIP and potential future son-in-law, Dad, sporting his 40 amulets of protection, brings out the chef's special, a bitter soup with buffalo tendon spiked with bile. That doesn't sound good. Man, but it is it. addictive right away. Deep and dark and herbaceous. You getting some of that heat? Yeah. Mm. You know, we talk about once you experience some of the sensory pleasures of the East, your previous life just isn't adequate. Mm. Um, any more? When the journey's coming to an end, when the movie's over, what's left to do? Oh yes, wrap things up. I think we've learned something here today in Chiang Mai. I can't summon exactly what that might be right now. You know, I was thinking about this old Muhammad said, you know, don't tell me what a man knows or what he says. Tell me where he's traveled. You learn stuff. Maybe it's to remember to bring something to remove makeup before hitting the cabarets. Like the first time that I spent a long period of time in Thailand, that, that sort of brightness, the spiciness, the simple elements making kind of this, this bright explosion of flavors. When I got back home, I immediately, like, wished I could be back in Thailand. Or maybe it just say, screw it, and have a good time. It's quite beautiful. Please, thank you so much. Oh, no, 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 no,
ชอบอ่าไปไปที่อเมริกานะเอาไปไปที่อเมริกานะเอาไปไปที่อเมริกานะเอาไปไปที่อเมริกานะเอาไปไปที่อเมริกานะเอาไปไปที่อเมริกาน